instrument which we are using is, is matter, so it is also materialistic in way. In a particular culture, probably you place spiritual goals on a higher level than materialistic goals. But uh, demand for spiritual goals is to uh, to be more materialistic than ever before. You see. Now, you, you mentioned that people have this need for uh, new religious experiences, uh, new gu- new gurus, new drugs, new just something new, and then so you come along. And for a lot of people, uh, you, they must fall into that same trap with you. I mean, they look at you, like, well, for instance, Paul, I knew him from a story I did on Da John. And uh, uh, so he was going from Da John to, and he was talking, he described you in a sense as a, as a guru. Yeah, but that's and and, and, and these, these articles write you up as, as sort of, a, there's a tone, there's a tone to the you know, stories. Say, a, so how do you feel about no, that? I, I mean, tell you, you say uh, that, you know, but the problem is... are falling into the same trap, right? No, I'm not falling into the same trap. you're not, but, but people who are coming to you... Are, but you uh, see that, that's, uh, when, since when once you are dissatisfied with one uh, illusion, uh, you're always looking for something else. This is what I am telling you. You have got to replace one illusion with another illusion, you know. So you, you want to believe. It's not only a want, but also... There is a need to believe in something or the other. You replace one belief with another belief. Uh, even if this is pointed out to them, there is no way that they can free themselves from this belief. You see, they move from one uh, guru to the other. But do you see that? Do you see, do you, do you see people doing that with you? Oh, of course, you see. All the time. Uh, all the time. Yeah. You know, I'm telling them, you see, you get lost, you see, you do what you like. You see, Rajneesh said the same thing. I, I, was ta- I was interviewing Rajneesh once up in Oregon, and he said... Uh, he had said that he doesn't want to start a religion. He doesn't want to be an ism. He doesn't want to be a Rajneesh ism. At the same time that his organization was putting out a book saying, uh, Introduction to Rajneeshism. <laughs> and so I said to him, How can you say you don't want to be an ism when you're allowing people to put this book out that says Rajneeshism? And he said, Well, they don't listen to me. <laughs> Which is kind of a cop out because yeah. he has some responsibility for what's done in his name. Yes, it is. So how do you get around that problem? I have so far successful, uh, have so far been successful in preventing people to create any uh, organization around me. But if you have no uh, no desire to to uh, pro- proselytize, why do you even want to talk to me? Because what I'm what I could very well do is write up the story and it's printed all these hundreds of thousands of times. Yes. But wouldn't you be? If you had, if, wouldn't you just to say no? I don't want to talk to this reporter right, because. Right. I talk to anybody, you see, I talk to... Uh, no, but you see what I mean? I mean, if you... I'm not, I'm not just anybody. No, I mean, I am. No, no listen, you see, no, you see, I will tell you, you see, this, I, I have seen a lot of all these newspapers and most written about newspapers in person in India. And uh, uh, they are looking for... Uh, you may not be looking for, you see, uh, for a new kind of a subject. As you say, you have written on Rajanish, uh, you have written on uh, Baba Free John, you have written on Krishna Murthy. Uh, that's your job. You yeah. See, you are looking for a new subject. Probably. It may not be because he, maybe he pressured you to come to see me. Or no, I didn't say anything personally. No, it's not. I actually came to you because of my friend had seen your book and, uh, was, and he is a very skeptical yes. sort. So, so, you see, uh, you are looking for a subject. You see, yeah. the people are asking me why suddenly you have decided, you see, I appeared on many of your television and PBS and all this. Why you have suddenly become public, or I say, gone public, they are right. asking all my right. friends. I avoid it. Right. It's going on public. You see, but unfortunately, you see, well, why you talk, uh, uh, it's a very difficult question to answer. What is the point in hiding myself, you see, in a cave? What does it prove, you see? If you become silent and do any uh, retirement uh, from this world, still you see the people. Uh, attach some uh, significance to that. You see, that is always the case. And my interest is, if it is a question of talking to her, if it is a question of talking to Paul, if it is a question of talking to anybody else, um, why not I talk to you, or why not I talk to that man, you see, um, Mishlaf here, or uh, somebody else there, you see, in, uh, on the television. They are entertainers. No, but if you really want to avoid being... No, no, I don't want, <coughs> I want to do something. There, there is a motivation, you see. 
the motive behind my wanting to see you or agreeing to see you, mm -hmm. there is no such a thing as a motiveless uh, action at all. Okay. The motive is, you see, to seek your help, to, to express myself uh, in such a way that uh, uh, if, you if you can put me across to your uh, readers, mm -hmm. that there is nothing uh, religious, that there is nothing spiritual about what I am talking about. Even if you call me uh, an agnostic or a nihilist, it doesn't matter. You see, the, the Polish people have translated that first book into Polish and submitted it to the government at that time a couple of years ago because there are no other publishers there. They rejected on the ground that it is a need, you see. Mm -hmm. They put a label on that. I don't know what the Russians would call that book when the time is. The book is translated into Chinese and they can't come to see me now, you see, in Hong Kong. So this is my motive. You see, I am, you see, all those who come to see me are either from that group or this group or Krishnamurti's group or disillusioned people with their particular groups. So the, the difficulty of carrying on a conversation with them, you see, I have to use your medium. I have no other way of expressing myself. But you, you have people who there are these, and I, I see them all the time, who, ju who jump from one guru to the exactly. next. Exactly. And, and then jumping to you is, in a way, a very logical progression. It's, a, it's not a logical progression at all, because they are translating, interpreting what I am saying within that religious framework, you see. So that is the reason why, you see, they put this label on me, the God-man, you see, in India, or a guru. See, the problem is... Anti-guru? Anti I am not. <laughs> I am not concerned about the guru at all. I am not a guru. So I want, you see, to, to express myself through your medium. Maybe you will be able to put me across to your readers. Uh, what I am trying to emphasize, that what is, if you call it an enter enlightenment, it doesn't matter. Uh, it has no religious content. In it. That's all I want to say. You, know? well, you say it's a natural state. It's a very natural state in the sense that natural state is not a synonymous term for enlightenment or, or any such thing at all. A natural statement, once the strangle hold of thought is, is released, you see, from controlling the, the whole of this body, it functions in a natural way. You know, the, the whole um, system becomes so sensitive, you see. So what I'm saying is, the, the mind is uh, sensual in its nature. It is interested only in sensuality and sensualist experiences. Even spiritual experiences, which we consider to be extraordinary, fall into the category of sensuality. Whereas this living organism is interested in uh, sensory activity. See, that is the living thing that is there. That's all that I'm pointing out. It has no um, interest, you see, to... Uh, to convert anybody, you are as unique as I am. Your uniqueness uh, cannot express itself as long as the, the cultural input has a stranglehold on it. If you are lucky and if it is freed from that stranglehold, whatever you are left with, you see, expresses itself. You see, but what is there is something unique. And that uniqueness cannot express itself as long as there is yes, an effort attempt on your part to fit yourself into that thing. Whatever potential is there, I'm not talking of spiritual potential. You see, the potential, the human potential, will surface and express itself in an extraordinary way. It is bound to be an individualistic thing. So what I'm saying is that, it, you see, the whole spiritual business is, is something like riding a tiger. And uh, it is, uh, it's a very tiring thing to go on riding a tiger uh, because you are frightened of jumping off the tiger. And uh, if you jump off, we fear that the tiger might gobble you up with there. So you, you keep ti riding the tiger, you see. So when once you are free from the fear uh, of this boredom or the fear of uh, jumping off the tiger for whatever reason is not there, that is all that is there you keep riding without any now, when you, at some point in your life, you had this same desire. Same, same. Otherwise, I would have wasted all my life. And but and you had this one sort of dramatic, dramatic. It, it, it was something like you see a lightning hitting me. Is and this the thing at the strip show? Is this a girly show? This yeah, was yeah, happened? The first time I felt the, uh, you see, Why there? Huh? Why there? Uh, you see, uh, as a protest against uh, Krishnamurti, you see. Somebody dragged me to attend Krishnamurti's talk. For the first time, they wanted us to buy tickets to, to listen to him in Paris. 
So I didn't want to pay any money to Krishnamurti's talks and my friend and I, we were standing there, I said, come on, let's go and uh, spend this money and uh, go to a, not a strip piece, I don't know what they call it. Uh, is it Burlesque? Uh, uh, Burlesque, uh, Burlesque, thank you, Burlesque. Not Burlesque, Burlesque is a very cheap thing, you know, strip tease. But um, there in the uh, stage show it is, you see, some sort. No, I know, like, like at the Lido in Paris. Yeah, yes. yeah. Something Paris like Bajir. Bajir. And I got Folly Bajir, yes, yes. yes. Uh, and I, or... Uh, Was it the Folly Bajir? Casino Repair, I think, actually. Yeah. Similar thing, yeah. similar thing. Yeah. And for the first time, there I experienced a, a very strange experience that is described there, you see. And when I was looking at it, I was not uh, uh, in any way upset by the whole thing at all. But who is dancing, you see? What is going on there, you see? This kind of a strange experience uh, hit me. You see, whether I was there dancing or they, the dancers are there, I could not separate these two things, you know. Oh, that's okay. And, uh, I felt as if I was there on the stage, you see, dancing, and with all this brush jumping up, you see, you see, and it was a very strange experience for me. Never, you had never seen something like that? Never felt like that at all, you see. You never seen a show like never. that? Never. Yeah. That was the first and the last time, not that I can go on. I recommend people to go. Well, I recommend that as a way <laughs> to do it. Not, not we have the Mitchell brothers. So no, 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 not at all. I don't recommend <laughs> anything. It's because I don't know what uh, triggered this in me. You know, that is why I use always this peanuts uh, business, you see, you know. But you must have been, it had something to do with where you were, because your whole thing is that you're, you're responding to what's the, out there, right? The separateness so. was absent, you see, I didn't know whether, you see, I was the dancer or whether I was watching it, it was a, some strange right. Right. A kind of an experience. I did not at that time relate that strange experience to anything that was uh, in the direction of my ach achieving the goal, you see. So there is, I never felt anything that there is anything, uh, nearness or uh, far awayness from uh, my goal, you see. It just hits you and uh, uh, it is a random thing you call it, you see. People wanting to find out the cause. Now a friend of mine has been asked to write a biography for Penguins. He's a, a famous movie director. And uh, I tell him, you see, in, in India, you see, his name? His name is Mahesh Bhatt. He produced one. Mahesh Bhatt is his name. He has produced a lot of